It is an undeniable fact that academia and intellectuals play a very important role in the growth and development of that country. Today we have with us Dr. Masood Ashraf Raja. He is Associate Professor at University of North Texas and he has contributed a lot in the field of literature and humanities. Well, my first question to you, Mr. Masood Ashraf Raja, how do you see yourself as Pakistani? Well, thank you so much for having me here. It's uh, really an honor and a pleasure. And uh, that's a really hard question to answer, but I'll try my best. So, and I'll mix English yeah, and Urdu is, so that we can really replicate our culture here. So, so, first of all, we need to understand whether Pakistani is a very precise, unchangeable concept, right? Most of the times, when we judge someone or say Pakistani or not, we measure it against our own subjective definition of what constitutes being a Pakistani. So before I answer the question, I would like to posit that Pakistani itself is a fluid concept. And depending on who we are, our class, our age, our age, so based on that, the way I see myself as a Pakistani is, is as a Pakistani who is from Pakistan but who works in the United States. So I'm already in a culturally ambivalent, ambivalent space. When I am in America, no one takes me to be an American. I am Dr. Masood Raja who is from Pakistan even though I teach literature. In America, my Pakistani identity gets more fixed because that's my identity. Now, when I come to Pakistan, I have no doubt that I'm Pakistani because I ground my Pakistaniism based on where I am from, right? So I am from Potwar, right? Gujar Khan. It was there long before Pakistan became an idea, and I'm hoping that it will be there until eternity. So basically, I don't need anyone's permission to be a Pakistani, right? I have places where my ancestors are buried. I've visit their graves. So I have a deep connection with Pakistan historically as a part of a group of people who have lived in this part of the world for at least 2,000 years. So that's my integral connection to Pakistan. But that alone doesn't make you Pakistani because there's more that we need, need to prove whether we're Pakistanis or not. And that comes in terms of my work, what is it that I do that in one way or the other enhances Pakistan, right? Makes it become better or makes it look better. That's so right. in that sense, when I'm in America, I'm working on so many projects that are dealing with how to represent Pakistan better, how to produce scholarship about Pakistan. And then when I'm here, I'm interacting with people who are studying, I'm a professor, and then as a Pakistani professor, I try to give as much help as possible. So I think all of these things combined without announcing it is me performing my Pakistani identity. Well, what we have seen that most of the uh, people who like uh, are working in America, they usually leave Pakistan or they get settled or they get nationality and uh, I mean, uh, they, they leave Pakistan for good. But you are a person who, who has been visiting Pakistan frequently and you're trying to contribute as much as possible. Can you please highlight like uh, the contributions that you have so far made? Well, it's a really hard question to answer because part of it suggest that I should praise myself, which I don't like doing, no. But I mean, it's simply, humbly speaking, uh, a few years ago in 2009, as a scholar, so I thought, what can I do as a scholar? So I started an academic journal. It's That's called right. Pakistani Art, the Journal of Pakistan Studies. It's in its sixth year of publication. So in a way, I would say that was a service to Pakistan because it allowed us to create a standard journal, a good journal, which dealt with issues related to Pakistan. It allowed, allowed us a platform to uh, bring works of Pakistani scholars. Literature, literary works or literary works, kind of work? Social sciences research, creative writing, poetry, anything that re represents Pakistan in one way or the other. So that was kind of one intellectual foray into working for Pakistan. Another one is, as a professor in America, right? When I walk into an American classroom, whether I like it or not, Pakistan walks into that classroom, 
Right? So whatever I do, the way I conduct myself, the way I behave with my students, in a way becomes a reflection of what kind of Pakis people Pakistanis produce. So that's my direct contribution in the trenches. If I'm a good person, if I'm a good professor, chances are people who come into my classes would have a better perception of Pakistan, which we absolutely need. And then in the third sense, what I've tried to do is, when I come here, I've tried to make sure that I make as much of myself available as possible. Could you tell us something more like about this UNT Normal Partnership? That's, and that's a what's great the question. Of and this, uh, so UNT Normal Partnership, Normal is National University of Modern Lang Languages, UNT is University of North Texas. Uh, it's a project funded by Department of State, U.S. Department of State, under an initiative called People-to-People -People Relationships. It's a $1 million project, and so I'm the director of that. The whole project is aimed towards sharing knowledge of our English department and normal English department and help train normal faculty and graduate students. So as part of that, I visit every summer and I teach a class and my colleagues come and then also about, I would say, 25 of normal scholars so far have visited our campus. They've stayed there uh, on, for about six weeks. They've done their research. So that's the immediate project. But because of that project, what has happened to my career as a scholar is that I have now gained more reach into Pakistani academia. And look, I, I am a retired major from Pakistan Army. So I had no academic friends. I didn't go to a private college. I to Pakistan Military Academy. Se, wo jo ek saal wala BA hota hai, wo kiya. Uske baad to mare dosyaar saare fauji the. To normal ki wajah se ye hua ke academia mein hamare dostiyan bhi ho gayi, professional relationships bhi ban gaye. Aur uski wajah se uh, it has given me a chance to learn more, but also to contribute more. Do you think like it's gonna impact them a lot, like I mean, the quality of education is going to improve with such kind of partnerships like in future. And how do you see the impact of this partnership on, especially on the faculty um, that has been, uh, that has visited or that, uh, that are planning to visit, you know? Uh, well, I mean, you know, it, it would be very hubristic of me to imagine that it can have a huge impact because Normal itself is a wonderful institution. I can bring, bring different kind of knowledge mm -hmm. and different way of doing things. Another thing, because we are dealing with those who teach humanities, right? So people who teach humanities are the ones who, in a way, make the most impact in students' lives. Because they are not just teaching them literature, they are also teaching them skills of communication, both verbal and written. They are teaching them how to interact with texts and how to read complex texts and, and, and draw meanings from them. So I think since these faculty members have visited us, they have observed our classes, they have seen our way of doing that, they themselves are very experienced teachers. So my hope is, and I've also seen it, because I meet so many of them every now and then, that they have incorporated some of the things that we oh, share with them and with their own teaching style. So I think in the long run, if you have 53 faculty members having had this kind of experience, and if they incorporate just a little bit of their experience with us in their teaching mm -hmm. and research, it could be a very transformative thing for the department and for normal. How do you see this uh, like our uh, higher education system? Uh, I mean, as far as the standard is concerned, uh, as far as quality is concerned, and how do you compare it with uh, uh, our education system with the American education mm -hmm. system? I think the differences of scale and of resources. Uh, given the resources which my university has, okay, uh, we are the 35th largest research university in the uh, United States. We have 36,000 students. Our annual endowment is more than $350 million, right? So if we have those resources and we accomplish something, well, most of it is because structurally we have those resources. Now, if you give the same resources to normal, normal has the potential in their faculty, in their students, to accomplish all that and maybe go beyond that. So at the end of the day, it's a question of resources, right? Also, I mean, I'm very hopeful that as universities rise in Pakistan, I mean, 20 years ago, 
there wasn't a research culture in Pakistani universities. Now already every university is mandating research, right? So I think combining the, the rising level of resources and faculty commitment and commitment of administrators, I think Pakistani universities will soon become very competitive. The only difference, one thing I think they would have to drastically change is, is the culture of privilege. There is a class system, you know it, I know it, and, and there is a big divide between the administrators and the faculty. Now, if that could be bridged and made more democratic and egalitarian, I think that would further... Before we ask him the next question, let's have a short break. Stay with us.